outgrowing Dr. Ruckman. If you've watched my videos over the years, you've heard me mention Ruckman. If you're not sure who he is, um, he was a Bible preacher and uh, pastor and things. And uh, description, of course, not a title there. Um, but uh, he was Peter Sturgis Ruckman. Um, he was an older man and everything. He died, I forget what it was, 2016, I think something like that but the man really knew the bible well defended the king james bible uh, did some real great things for the lord and you know a lot of people have questioned his salvation um and uh you know i think it's a smart thing to question anybody's salvation not to just believe every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god as the bible instructs us to do um but uh ruckman definitely had some things about him that are the marks of a saved man and uh but a lot of people they get really offended if you say anything negative about peter ruckman and uh because a lot of people are part of his cult that he formed anytime you're a good man uh people will naturally instinctively be drawn to you and they'll start to try to make you into some kind of a great spiritual leader that just does nothing wrong and whatever else and you can judge other people's salvation by how they feel about dr so-and-so or you know, brother, brother, so and so, or whatever. Let's just be straight about it. Uh, man, mankind is designed to worship, and man will worship something or someone. And a lot of people like to worship something physical, you know. And uh, some of you out there, uh, I've seen some of you trying to worship me. Uh, that's a real quick way to get on my ba bad side. Uh, don't worship me. I am not worth worthy of your worship. Uh, esteem me very highly in love for my work's sake. That's fine. That's scripture. But uh, worship? No. Let's not do that. <laughs> but uh, there are great men of God that are out there that spend their whole life, dedicate their whole life to serving the Lord. And that's wonderful. It's great. As I said, esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Amen. But uh, there comes a point in time when even the very greatest men, um, they stop at a certain point in time. Uh, no man will ever be able to be on the, the level of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to, to look at every man as the reality is that every man at his best state is altogether vanity, the Bible says. And I can say that about myself. Um, chickadees are up there saying good morning let me switch here but uh we have a chickadee up up here in the trees above me there's another silly bird up here in a tree i'll show you this real quick it's a very rare bird here that you're about to see there's only one of these in existence in all of northern maine are you ready all you bird watchers out there Right there he is. <laughs> yeah, so. Terrible. I'm not sure if that's a bird or a silly little monkey or something, I'm not sure. Forest monkey, we like to call him sometimes because he likes to climb trees. But getting back to the topic at hand here, um, you know, Ruckman was a, he was definitely a great man but you have to get to a point where you say uh i appreciate him i really respect the man but i know he messed up in a couple of areas and i'm not going to do that same thing you know the same thing applies when you think about your birth father the one that you know raised you and whatever else even the best fathers out there um they're not perfect and i remember remember my father used to always tell me before he passed away he'd say you know, learn from the good things that I did raising you. But he said, you know, I made a bunch of mistakes. Don't do those with your son. Yeah. Uh, my father was involved in sports, playing sports and watching sports on television. And uh, I'm not going to do that with my son. I'm not a fan of watching grown men play with balls. Okay. Uh, football, baseball, basketball, whatever, 
throw the ball to me, throw the ball to me. Uh, well, when I became, became a man, I put away childish things. Uh, I'm not going to waste my time on playing with a ball. But uh, that's a whole other issue. But learn from the greatness of great men, but don't stop there, all right? Um, Ruckman, what was his, what did he do right? Well, he believed that the King James Bible was God's word. Now, he wouldn't go so far as to say it was perfect. He would say, you know, preserved without proven error. Because, see, you know, I understand all the debate stuff with uh, higher textual criticism. If you say it's perfect, then they say, oh, you must mean it's inspired. It has the same, um, uh, it has the same uh, thing about it as you know, original inspiration or something like this. Well, if you say that, then you say, but it's not the same as the original autograph, so therefore, then you believe in double inspiration, or you get into all these little debates. And so Ruckman, in a, as a way to try to avoid the debates, um, you know, he would go with the thing of that the King James Bible was preserved without proven error. Well, eh, you know, I just would, uh, I like to be considered as a crazy nut by the likes of James White and the others, which, you know, he actually made a video, I forget what it was called, something about when King James onlyism goes crazy or something about me. And he never did answer my question. I, my question in my video was, why is James White's book endorsed by a Jesuit? And he never answered the question, <laughs> like a good Jesuit would do. It's kind of funny how that works. You know, I showed the, th showed the thing that uh, Norman Geisler was a Jesuit. And uh, James White kind of, oh well, yeah, I never knew why you know, Norman Geisler went to a Jesuit school. You know, but this, you know, Dunlinger guy's a nut. He didn't answer the question. All you did was confirm what I said, that Norman Geisler's a Jesuit. Jesuit educated. Okay, he's not a Jesuit, full-fledged Jesuit priest, but um, Jesuit educated. So why would he endorse James White's book? And of course, he actually had Mitch Paqua, the SJ, literal Jesuit priest that James White debated different times. And he actually had an endorsement on uh, James White's book about the Trinity. So yes, it, his book, his one book actually was uh, openly promoted by a actual Jesuit priest. So, um, you know, but, oh, he made you look like a fool. And I had different people, oh, Dunlinger was embarrassed by that. I'm not embarrassed by it. Some heretic comes out and makes fun of me and whatever. Why would that embarrass me? You know, it's kind of stupid, but uh, some of the uh, quote-unquote brethren are so uh, afraid of looking dumb. But, you know, uh, Ruckman did that wrong. He should have just come out and said that the King James Bible is the inspired, pure, preserved, perfect Word of God. Whatever good thing you want to say about the King James Bible, I believe it. But, you know, um, and he would say, if that Bible's right, and you know how I feel about it, if that Bible's right, well, that's still, it's showing a little shred of, not doubt, but just kind of a little loophole there. Well, I can't get cornered that way by different scholars and forget all that stuff. But, you know, Ruckman had a PhD, and you had to preserve that image and whatever. And uh, he would talk about, you know, so-and-so is not even an educated man. There's no scripture for that. There isn't one verse of scripture to say that so-and-so is not educated. You know, unlearned, you could say that, but what's this educated stuff? And it was, by the way, it was lost people that were saying that the disciples were unlearned. They, they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. So again, uh, you never see Paul saying to anybody else, you know, hey, um, I understand that even though you're not educated, you've said some good things. That's never brought up in the body of Christ. So again, that's another thing I disagree with Peter Ruckman on. Another one would be the church building issue. He knew, he knew. I mean, I have the video showing that he said that as soon as you get a church building, you've gone anti-New Testament. Um, and he's right. You get a church building, you are now against the teachings of the New Testament. Um, the New Testament is you're in church all the time. There's no such thing as a building you go to and that's when you're in church and you act differently in church and you dress differently in church. It's absolute nonsense. 
well it doesn't matter if we are meeting in a in a building or you can meet in a house you can meet in a building and no it matters because you're turning it into some kind of a holy place that you go to and and you act differently than when you get there and hey don't run in church you know you say to your children and whatever else uh yes it does matter and as a result there's all kinds of problems at those church buildings and uh pensacola whatever bible baptist church whatever it is they had all kinds of problems down there and they still have all kinds of problems um church buildings always have problems well it's christians have problems amen i know all the arguments just you know give it a rest <laughs> but uh you know the uh, other thing was ruckman's marriage um he was a pretty rotten husband uh quite frankly oh he was a good man compared to I understand, okay, and I'm not trying to just say tear the guy down and whatever, but Ruckman ruined his marriages. He even said it in one of his studies. I remember him talking about his first marriage, and he said, I was completely to blame. I ruined her. She was a good, you know, Christian girl, and I completely ruined her, you know, and it, the, the fault of that marriage is completely mine, you know, and uh, why? how did he ruin it? Well, because he was putting his whole ministry thing in front of his marriage well that's a problem you shouldn't do that and you know and i have to consider that stuff and again oh you're attacking peter ruckman you're tearing down his character no brethren i'm learning from what he did wrong a good teacher well you'll never stop with you know you have to learn from me and no one else and you have to stop with brian denninger if you're not wearing red and black buffalo plaid flannels you know you're not right with god or something no 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 Learn from my mistakes. Learn from the dumb things I say sometimes. I'm not real clear on stuff. And you could be a little bit nicer and smile more. You know, I don't smile all the time because it's just not who I am. You know, I think people that, that fake smile all the time are not to be trusted. But, <laughs> side tangent there. But the, the whole thing is, brethren, I can look at Peter Ruckman and I can say, that guy messed up marriage after marriage after marriage. You know, and I knew people that... <clears throat> Uh, new Ruckman and his last wife, and they were having some issues too and, and things. You get so driven that you're going to serve the Lord and you just have to be there all the time and and uh, just always traveling and always doing all kinds of things. You're missing the mark. Um, a married man is supposed to care for the things of the world how he may please his wife. You know, if any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You have to provide for your wife. There are times that she needs to be taken on a date, that she needs to be to feel loved. Do something kind for her, you know? And Ruckman, I know his first marriage, they had five children and, uh, and he was just always out traveling and things. And he talked about how that the trailer that they were living in, his wife and the children, that it didn't even have its own bathroom, you know? and. And that they had a shared bathroom with other trailers in the area. And I mean, just terrible. Five children and she's there by herself while Ruckman's out preaching. Building up his career as a preacher. It's not right. It's not right. Well, I doubt he was saved then. Amen. I think he was lost. He's a heretic. No, no. He just uh, made some big mistakes. And you have to outgrow Ruckman. You have to outgrow me. You have to outgrow... Uh, D.L. Moody and, and uh, J. Frank Norris and, and uh, Oliver B. Green and whoever you want to study. Any of the, the great preachers of the past. Lester Roloff. Uh, I think very highly of Lester Roloff. Oh, then he was, he was perfect. Bless God. Amen. He was perfect. No, Lester Roloff said some rather stupid things about eating meat. He came up with some nonsense, false science. And uh, saying you're in sin if you're eating that greasy sausage and all this other stuff. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. Um, all flesh is grass, brethren. All flesh is corruptible. And uh, last time I remember reading in the Bible the one time about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're to look to Jesus Christ. But uh, mark them which walk. So as you have them as an example, and sample, I think it is, we're supposed to also mark certain men and say, I really appreciate that guy. And that's what I do with Ruckman. I appreciate his bold stands that he took at a time when it was not popular. Um, 
you know, again, these new versions. Oh, let's come out with these new versions and we're going to show, you know, that the, they're far more accurate and they're better and we need to have Christians studying the Greek. And, uh, you know, this is so important that Christians understand the original languages. Okay, what has it led to? More godliness or uh, more falling away? Oh, that's right, more falling away. Uh, we have all these new versions coming out and oh, well, we're going to have a, the Legacy Standard Bible, uh, you know, by John MacArthur. And it's not about the money. It's, it's about lots of money. And uh, we can just come out with this thing and it's going to be clear up the errors of the New American Standard Version. I've preached for, for years, but there's a few things where it needs to be clearer. Really? Uh, where's the massive revival that should come from now having the Bible in its most accurate form ever? Where's it at? It's not there. And you see these fakers back in the 19, you know, 60s and 70s when Ruckman was really starting to hit these new versions. Um, you know, they, they were still pr being promoted and all this money's being put into it by these big, wealthy uh, Christian businessmen like uh, uh, Dewey Lockman and uh, bought the American Standard Version, the rights to it, and uh, came re released it as uh, the New American Standard Version, if you don't know the story of that. And uh, Franklin Logsdon came out and said, I can't endorse this. It's wrong. It's terribly wrong. It's frightfully wrong, his exact words. You know, well, good for him. He realized what evil thing he was part of. But uh, that's when all the promotional stuff was happening, and that's when Ruckman was there fighting. Hey, hats off to Ruckman. Good job. But uh, we're not in that time period anymore. We're now in the 21st century, the internet age. Uh, you're watching this. Uh, there's no VHS tape that had to be sent over to you through a mailing list somehow, and you sent me a check, and I had to go to the bank and try to cash it. and whatever. No, you're watching this. You're watching it today as it's come out, 23rd of August. Um, it's amazing what we can do now to serve the Lord. And I can't look and say, well, I'm going to pattern my ministry after D.L. Moody and I'm going to hold big tent revivals. Think about what, hap what would happen if I tried to hold a tent revival right now, okay? Even if I went to an area where there were a lot of people. I mean, there's only a few thousand people that even live in this area where I'm at here in Northern Maine. I'm going to hold a tent revival. Let's go to down to New York City area or something like that, or you know, go closer to where we're at here, uh, Boston. We'll say tent revival. The evangelist Brian Denlinger are going to be preaching tonight, and you know, a week long revival meeting would well, have maybe. I'd probably it would actually draw a crowd. It'd be perverts and you know people that think that there's something else, uh, and you know. There's that forest monkey again. Trying to stay off camera, but I'm going to catch him. There he is. <laughs> but, um, anyhow, uh, but you know, there probably would be a large crowd of people that would come and protest. They certainly wouldn't be coming to hear the gospel. So, you know, and it would probably be the town council would come out and say, uh, you know, we need to monitor your speech for. If there's any hate or anything like that, we're going to have to put you in prison and whatever, you know, would not go well. Um, you have to grow, in other words, brethren. Grow beyond those that have taught you the Word of God. Uh, Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. You're to look to Him. You're running a race. And you're not looking up there at the finish line and saying, Oh, I can't wait to see Brother Brian in heaven. Oh, I just can't wait. Well, that's okay. You know, we'll, we'll talk then. You know, I won't have to answer your emails. I'll be able to be right there and say hi to you and everything. But it's about Jesus. Don't ever turn your eyes away from Jesus and turn them towards a man, a sinful man like me. Um, always remember that. And you see, and here's the point, brethren. Here's the point of the whole video. If you're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, then you're going to say, you know what, I think I need to clean up this, and I think I need to clean up that, and I'm not doing a real good job with my marriage, and, and uh, my wife, you know, I could do a better job and things with her. Um, you know, I should be taking care of my son more, 
teaching him some things and whatever else. I need to spend some more time in the Word. And See, you're looking to Jesus, the perfect man. Um, but if you look to me and you say, well, Brother Brian, um, I know for a fact that he's done this and he's done that. You know, Brother Brian, he used to struggle with video games as a lost man and even up until when he early years of when he got saved. So since Brother Brian struggled with video games, that means I have at least a few years I can do the same thing. You know, yeah, uh-huh. And uh, someday I can attain to Denlinger-ness and, um, and I can have uh, a place in northern Maine or something and live off-grid and whatever. No, you need to look to Jesus, okay? And if you're looking to Jesus, then you'll be able to see the errors and things in other people. And we must not get to the point where we create our own little version of papal infallibility. And well, you know, I know Ruckman did a few things, but I'm not talking about it. I'm not going to say anything to diminish his character. Uh, no, it shouldn't be that way. You know, uh, praise the Lord for what Ruckman came out with over the years. Absolutely, 100%. But don't dare stop there. Say, so, yeah, but he messed up in a few areas. I'm not going to do the same. People say, well, then you think he was lost? No, I don't think he was lost. I think he messed up bad in a couple of areas. And, you know, another place that Ruckman really messed up, really blew it, was, uh, you know, this, oh, he had a lot of grace for people. He had a, he had a lot of grace for people. Yeah, I've, I heard him make statements about how that uh, he thinks Roman Catholics are saved. There's, there's saved Roman Catholics. Not all of them. But he'd say, you know, I, I believe that there are saved Roman Catholics. Amen. You know, they, they stay in the Catholic Church for whatever reason. And uh, he was on some radio program the one time, and this, this uh, black, you know, sister in the Lord, she she just ripped him a new one on that. And I, I couldn't agree more with her. You know, and she was saying, Dr. Rugman, there's no way. There's no way that these people can be saved. She said, that's that's ridiculous. They're in the, you know, Mystery Babylon. You can't be saved and stay in that. You know, Lord, the Holy Spirit will convict you and get you out of there. And Ruckman's, oh, you know, come on, sister. No, there's a lot of people. They do these things. But, you know, see, the thing is, which I have had to deal with in my ministry, and that is, here's how it works. Um, if you hold to the standards of Scripture, then you will realize that there are very few people that are saved, genuinely born again. But then when you try to preach that, it comes across as work salvation. You see, because you have to expect, inspect the fruit and look into their life and whatever else, and you say, I don't think this person's saved. I don't think that they genuinely got born again. Well, then you're teaching work salvation. No, I'm not teaching work salvation. I'm teaching genuine salvation. That there's something there, works meet for repentance after you get saved. Okay, there needs to be something that happens. If there's nothing that happens when you get saved, then it didn't take, okay? Um, and there's, that's the vast majority of professing Christians. They're just that. They're professing Christians. They didn't get born again. But see, again, then you make this thing of you get real exclusive then. And, oh, then most people are lost. Yes, I have to teach that. Well, then what's the gospel then to you? You have to do, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, and, you know, clean up your life and do this and do that. Well, you're, you're making works. No, it's not about works, okay, in terms of to get you to the point of salvation. You don't do good works to get saved. You do good works because the Holy Spirit moved into your life. And you get into all this, this uh, debating back and forth, and then, you know, oh, you're crazy, you think this, you think that, you know, and then you have to, you meet somebody and they say, hey, I'm a Christian, and you say, let me get out my list. Okay, <clears throat> point number one, do you believe the King James Bible? They say, yes, I do. Okay, um, does your wife dress modestly? Yes, she does. Uh, and then you go down through the list, you know, uh, do you believe it's okay for Christians to celebrate Christmas or they don't have to? Well, no, I'm against Christmas. Oh, I don't know. You're getting legalistic or no, I do Christmas. Oh, oh you're a pagan. And, and then, you know, you just, uh, do you believe in the pre-trib, rapture, mid-trib or post-trib? And, and you get this huge list of things. Uh, you know, that's not what you want to become. You just have to, you know, I meet somebody and they say, hey, I'm a Christian. I appreciate your bumper stickers. I say, well, praise the Lord. And if it goes beyond that, I'll say, so when did you get saved? Tell me your testimony, you know? And I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not going to just judge somebody because they, there's some questions I have just from looking at them. There could, they could just be newly saved. They don't, haven't figured a few things out or whatever. But the problem is when you go the opposite end of that and you say, well, you know, all somebody has to do is just make a profession of salvation. 
I think brother so-and-so is saved. I think sister so-and-so is saved. Well, yeah, but they're messed up in all these different places. They're saying things that are heretical, that are whatever. Well, yeah, but they're just, you know, they, as long as they profess to be saved, then they're saved. Uh, and that's one of the big issues with Ruckman. Oh, he had grace for people. Oh, yeah, he had uh, grace for Jack Hiles, um, the man that his own church people are coming out and saying, um, you know, Pastor Hiles here, Brother Hiles, he's, he's got some perversion problems. He's got some major issues, some things that are wrong with him. And they'd come to Ruckman, and Ruckman would just kind of overlook it and whatever. That's a problem. Uh, I want to outgrow that. And I hope you do too. I hope that you want to have a perfect standard in the King James Bible. I hope you have a perfect man to look to, the Lord Jesus Christ, and say, He is my standard. He is the author and finisher of my faith. And I'm going to look to Him. I'm going to mark them which walk, so I have them as an example. Hey, learn from what I've done. You know, uh, the debt-free thing and whatever else. Um, Ruckman never preached on that that, I ever, that I'm aware of. You know, he might have mentioned that you should try to stay out of debt, but he never, I don't remember any kind of dedicated teaching, and I've listened to a lot of his stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. One of you can correct me. Put it in the comments section below if he had a sermon on it. But uh, very few preachers are willing to talk about the debt problem. And here we are, um, right at the end of the dollar, looking towards the dollar collapse and the uh, stock market crash, which Ruckman ironically had a old study, the coming economic stock market crash, and uh, he was saying about this stuff that's happening right now, he was talking about it in the 1970s, thinking that it was going to happen. Uh, so we've gone a lot farther, you know, down the road since then, you know, 50 years later here, basically, from when he was doing his study on the stock market crashing. And now we're seeing uh, Michael Burry, the famous uh, stockbroker guy, and he bought uh, one over a billion dollars worth of put options uh, against the s p or whatever there in the stock market thing without getting in all the details of that but when you buy a put option that means you're basically betting on that thing crashing and so he's thinking that there's going to be a big crash robert kiyosaki the infamous rich dad poor dad guy he said stock market's going to crash soon in a tweet here recently so there's a lot of these big investor guys and they're saying the stock market's going to crash well ruckman was talking about that 50 years ago good good but did he prepare people to get out of debt, to avoid it. Well, I think he made a mention of it in that study now that I'm thinking about it, but did he actually preach that it's a sin to be in debt? Well, that would start cutting into the tithes a little bit there, you know, and some of the church people might get a little offended, you know what I mean? So, um, you just have to do right, brethren, and you have to be open to what the Lord shows you, and you have to study quite a bit. And so I do my best on that. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But, uh, so I just wanted to do this video, you know, just to explain my stand on Peter Ruckman. If I ever found out the guy was a Freemason, I'd have to look into the evidence and, you know, or some other kind of bad thing like that. Um, you know, uh, I was a big fan of Sam Jones, uh, the Methodist evangelist guy. And then I found out he was a, um, Knights Templar or something, I think like that. And, you know, high level Freemason, he was working with the Catholic church and things. <laughs> uh, no dump that guy um and you know he had other issues and things as well but so uh don't ever stop with a man um jesus christ is to be the author and finisher of your faith so that is going to be it please do take heed to my words um study the word of god for yourself be a real man um it's supposed to be you and the lord okay so develop that personal relationship with jesus christ We'll see you in the next video.